Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. Uh, in this video, we're talking about factoring trinomials, and I am going to show you an alternate way of factoring. We call this method the um, X box method, so kind of aptly titled there. Uh, this X we use, I used in my other uh, more traditional factoring video. Uh, we'll use that again. This is kind of called the AC method using this box. Um, but we're going to throw another box in there. So we call it X box. So let's just dive right in. You will notice this is a quadratic trinomial. It's got one, two, three terms. My first step is, do I have a GCF? Um, so I need to look at my three terms and say, is there a greatest common factor that I can pull out? Um, this is a one, there's an understood one there. So one, four, and 12. The greatest thing I could pull out would be one. So no for my numbers. I've got an X squared, an X, and no X. So I can't pull an X out. Um, if you need a review on factoring out the GCF, I highly recommend you go back and watch my uh, factoring the greatest common factor video. You really can't tackle factoring trinomials without having factoring the GCF down first. So, side note, do we have a GCF here? No, so we can go ahead and proceed with our AC method. So what that means is we label our A is our first term, B is our second term, C is our third term. And that A, that's an understood one right there. So if you remember in this X box, we what goes up top is A times C, and what goes in this bottom is B. So A times C, so 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. Notice I didn't multiply that X squared. I don't want any letters in this box. Okay, I'm going to have a number here, 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 and here. No letters. Okay, just numbers. So, and then what goes down here is my B value, which is a negative 4. So the way this X works is I've got to think, I've got a number here and here. They're going to multiply to give me negative 12. They're going to add together to give me negative 4. So let's just think about the signs real quick. If I'm multiplying two numbers and I'm getting a negative, the only way I can do that is to have a negative and a positive. That's the only way I can multiply two numbers and end up with a negative. So I know one of my numbers is negative, one is positive. So now let's think about everything that goes into 12. Um, so the factors of 12, 12 is a pretty small number, so we can just kind of note it uh, to the side over here. We'll note it over here. We've got 1 and 12. We've got 2 and 6. We've also got 3 and 4. And then 4 and 3. So once you repeat, you know that you're done. Uh, so one of these combinations, knowing one will be negative and one will be positive, are going to add together to give me negative 4. So 1 and 12, no. Whether I make the 1 negative and the 12 positive, or the reverse, the 12 negative and the 1 positive, either way it's not going to give me negative 4. We're looking for kind of like a discrepancy of 4 between uh, our two numbers. So looking down here, what about 2 and 6? Well, let's think. Negative 2 plus 6, that would give me positive 4. So what about negative 6 plus 2? Those do indeed add together to give me negative 4. Okay, so negative 12 times, or excuse me, negative 6 times 2 gives me negative 12. Negative 6 plus 2 gives me negative 4. And if we were to check, it did end up being that one, if we were to check the 3 and 4, uh, those would not work. So only one of your factor sets will work. So now that I've found two new terms using my AC method, what I'm going to do is rewrite this trinomial as a four term problem. And this kind of comes back from my video on factoring a four term polynomial. Um, so you might want to review 
that video as well. So our A value stays the same. Our B value splits in two. And it splits into our two new numbers that we found. So it'll be negative six. And remember that B value had an X. So our new B values will both have X's. So negative six and positive two X. And our C value stays the same. So notice how that B just split into two. So now that we have a four term polynomial, it just goes directly into what we already learned in the last video using our box. So I'm gonna take each of my four terms and put them in a box. So I've got my first term is x squared or one x squared if you wanna see that. Second term is negative six x. Third term is positive two x. And my fourth term is negative 12. Now I have a lot of students ask me, well, what if I put my positive 2x here and my negative 6x here? That's totally fine. As long as the, the, the most uh, common error I see is that students leave the x's off. Okay, they forget, oh, my b value has an x with it, and they ended up leaving that off. That, I see that a lot. Your order here between these two doesn't matter. Your A needs to be here, your C needs to be here. That is very important, okay? So now we'll proceed. We're gonna find the GCF of each um, section. So we'll start with this first two boxes. We're gonna move bottom to top. So between positive two X and X squared, I'm looking for my GCF. So uh, that's got a one in front of it. So between one and two, the highest number I can pull out is a one. Um, and so I've got an x squared and an x. So the largest I can pull out is an x. It's going to be positive because my leading sign is positive right here. So let's move over here and try this one. Negative 12 and negative 6. Well, I see my leading sign is negative, so I'm going to pull out a negative. And between 6 and 12, my GCF will be 6. I can't pull an x out because even though there's one there, there's not one here. So now we'll move over. We're going to go right to left. So between negative 6x and x squared, well, my leading sign's positive, so I know my, my number or letter is going to be positive. I've got a 1 and a negative 6, so the greatest number that can come out is 1. x squared and an x, so I can pull out an x. All right, now we'll do the bottom, right to left. Negative 12 and positive 2x, I know my leading sign's positive, so I'm going to write a positive. 2 and 12, my GCF will be 2. Can't pull an X out, because even though that one doesn't have one, does have one, that one doesn't, so no X. And now I just write my answer. So I've got my top binomial, X minus 6, and my side binomial, X plus 2. That's it. Let's try another example. So for this one, as always with factoring, my first question is, do I have a GCF? And I gotta be careful, because in this case, I actually do. Notice that I've got two, 14, and 24. All of those have a two in common, which means I need to pull out that GCF of two. I can't pull an X out because if you'll notice this 24 doesn't have one. So let's go ahead and factor out that two. So literally, I'm dividing the two out of each term, all right? And if you need a reminder on that, please, again, go back and watch the GCF video, okay? Because I'm going to move rather quickly through this. So 2 divided by 2 is just 1, so I have an x squared left over. 14 divided by 2 is positive 7. I've got an x left over. Positive 24 divided by 2 is positive 12. So now I have my new trinomial. My two's just gonna kinda hang out on the side there. We do want to include that two with our answer. So um, you just don't wanna forget, you might wanna go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and write a two right there. So I'll remember that when I end up coming down and writing my answer that a two is part of my answer, okay? All right, so now I've got a trinomial. So I'm gonna label my A, my B, and my C. Remember what goes in the top of the X is our A times C. So A times C is 12, positive 12. 
My B value is positive 7. Now let's think about what our signs would be. I've got, a, I've got two numbers here and two signs that are going to multiply to give me 12 and add to give me 7. So if I'm multiplying and getting a positive number, that means my signs either have to be both positive or both negative. So which one? Well, that's why we look at our B value. Our B value is also positive. So if we're multiplying and getting a positive and adding and getting a positive, that means both of my numbers have to be positive. Okay? And it's kind of a trick. If you've got a double positive here, you'll have a double positive here. So that might be a easier way to think about it. So let's think, I've got 12, conveniently it happened to be the same number as over there, although that one was negative. Won't always be 12, um, but again, let's think of everything that goes into 12. We already mentioned it over here, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, and that's everything. So this time we're adding two numbers together, they're both positive, we're going to get positive 7. So 1 and 12, no, 1 plus 12 is 13. 2 and 6? No. 6 plus 2 is 8. So that's out. 3 plus 4? Yes. There's our two numbers. 3 and 4. And they'll both be positive. So I'm going to come up here and turn this trinomial into a four-term problem so that I can go ahead with that box. So remember our A value stays the same. Then we got a positive 3x positive 4x. I got those two numbers from right there. It's this b value splitting in two. Don't forget to include your x's. And my c value stays the same. So now I've got a one, two, three, four term problem to put in my four boxes. So I've got my x squared, my positive 3x, my positive 4x, and my positive 12. I want to factor out my GCF. We'll start with bottom to top right here. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this a bit more, but I've got a positive 4 and a 1. Now my leading sign is going to be positive, and it'll just be a 1. And then x squared and x, the greatest I can pull out is x. Here my leading sign is positive. Between 3 and 12, my GCF will be 3. I can't pull an x out. Um, sorry, we did that one. <laughs> Now we're going to move right to left. So I've got an x squared and a positive 3x. I know it's going to be a positive leading sign. And the biggest I can pull out is just an x. And now my last section. So I've got a 4x and a positive 12. I know my leading sign will be positive. And between 4 and 12, the largest I can pull out is 4. And I can't pull an x out. So now I just need to write my answer. I've got x plus 3 and x plus 4. And I'm not going to forget that that 2 is part of my answer. That was my GCF I pulled out right at the beginning. One Another question I do commonly get is, well, what if I put x plus 4 and then x plus 3? Does order matter here? It does not. And the reason why is because this is saying x plus 3 times x plus 4. And if you remember, when we multiply, order doesn't matter. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. Order does not change the answer. Um, so hopefully you feel a little better about factoring trinomials. Again, it's just kind of an easier alternative to traditional factoring if you don't mind drawing the x's and the boxes. Uh, this has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.